experience with the USA with the USA dodgeball combine. Um, you know where he's you know playing you know trying to play cloth, you know and try to you know make the team. Um, so that way, oh, big shot right there by Stewart, Hunter Stewart. <laughs> All right, I will come back and join you. Of course. Yeah, I was just talking earlier about, you know, oh, great kill right there by Cloud, taking out number nine, Adam Butts. Um, I was just talking earlier about Zach Fanar and his experience with the USA Dodgeball Combine. Um, Maryland great, you know, trying to represent us. And good God. And there goes Hunter Stewart once again. Another kill right there by 69 Bob. And Cloud oh, once again. Big, and, bro. And it's okay. Let me start all the way over again. Penn State, not even a minute in, at least four kills. They are not playing no games. And they got four balls, and they do not care. That's not going to work, Maryland. That will work. Another kill for Hunter Stewart. Kill. Should we just start counting? Is that three, four? At, at least three. So for those of you guys who are not familiar, um, as we're still working on the editing for, you know, Dodgeball of the Month. Hunter Stewart was your February Dodgeball of the Month. And one of the big reasons why when he was putting on a clinic against Cincinnati, getting their first win against Cincy, 3-2, to two, number two of Hunter Stewart. And he, he's, been, he's been in the zone. He's, he's been in the zone. I remember I, commentating that game uh, I, with I, you, and it was – I lost it. I, I, he, he, great kill right there by number two, Chris. Much needed kill, take out number twelve, Gonzalez. But um, great kill right there by Joey Tiger. Pretty much just baited his opponent, taking out number eight. Pretty sure that's Rodriguez right there. If this is how it's gonna be, no, sorry, sure would. Throughout <laughs> this game, Jesus, it is going to be. An interesting matchup if JMU can find themselves. Great kill right there by now going into that final game against Penn State, and Penn State can find themselves 2 0. Yeah, great kill right there by Caleb Dixon. Dang, and that's another kill, taking out number five. Hi, Rod. This game has been going back and forth. This And this is actually good. Long, God. Bro, I missed it, unfortunately. We got, uh, but we got it on the stream. Okay, well, I am so you good. Maybe, maybe I'm good. I, I don't know. Am I going to go back and watch this? Maybe. Maybe. You know. You should. Uh, I would. It's Hunter Stewart we're talking about here. Yeah, but, you know, it's not good to idolize people. I mean, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> people <laughs> used to idolize you for crying out loud. No. Anywho, team throw coming up, and this should make the point. Well, spoke too soon. That's on me, y'all. Marilyn, you can get mad at me for saying that. Oh, oh my, my God. God. And just. Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure Hunter Stewart just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, uh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. That's. It's like, hey, let me go throw four guys out. And then on top of it, I'm going to finish this point off by catching it at head level with my hands. And you said not to idolize people. That's what you said, I even, know, though, even I though I didn't start the time. But it doesn't matter because the score is 1-0 to zero in favor of Penn State. We are Penn State, yes. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that. Actually. You, you're going to have to be okay with it, man. I, I, am I? I mean, aren't you a VCU guy? I, I, am, I am a VCU guy. And you're, you're going, we are Penn State? I, 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 I got to show the support, man. I got to be unbiased because people – because folks are going to be giving me a hard time if I'm not. Someone thought I was a James U okay, commentator. So, all right, we're going to have a special guest commentator, uh, Wyndham White. He's going to come up here. I think he's uh, – he well, – let me let me try an introduction here. Let me let me talk to him real quick. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> all right, so we got – we got a. Uh, you said you said physics and what? Yeah. All right. So we got a huge nerd coming on. Uh, no. Uh, no. So physics, computer science. I mean, geez. Uh, with a three nine seven, and I we, we I was talking about this earlier on stream. It's probably because he's been hit in the head a couple times. Uh, that's why he doesn't have a four zero. But still pretty impressive. He's going to be taking over commentating for the rest of this game. I will be back. 
Uh, so here's here's Wyndham. Awesome. Yes. Wyndham White the fifth. So how are we doing today? I'm doing pretty well. Tough game, obviously against JMU, losing six one. Um, but it's all right. We got two more games ahead of us. So I'm excited to watch this game. I haven't seen Penn State really play this year live, so I'm excited. Well, I mean, you're in for a treat, man, because um, they're playing fast and they're playing with um, bad intentions, man. Mm. But, yeah, but you guys have a roster right there um, to your left on the table, you know, when you look at names or whatnot. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. What a catch by Hunter Stewart at the end of that game. Huh? Jeez wow. Louise. That guy just been putting on a clinic in the past month. I was just talking to JMU catcher Nick Foss, and he was saying he thinks he should be player of the year, Hunter Stewart. What do you think? I mean, listen, I, I'll put it to you like this. If Penn State makes a very deep run, gets to the Final Four as he gets another kill, it would be hard for me to say he wouldn't be up there. We, got, we definitely got some strong players of the year candidates. Uh, from Michigan State and Ohio and Ohio State. But like I said before, if Hunter Stewart, good God. Wow. If, if Hunter Stewart and Penn State makes a deep run, which they are more than capable of doing, it, it's going to be hard for me not to put that na put his name on the list. Good. Oh, my I, gosh. I, I'm, I'm losing adjectives wow. now. I'm, I'm trying to be professional. I'm trying to Oh, me. my. Are you serious? God man did a 360 spin and just drew a straight bullet wow. at number 22 from wow. Maryland. And it's just, I don't know, man. Park, it's, de it's, definitely sorry, tough, it's definitely tough to disagree with. It all depends on a deep run in nationals. If you, if you don't go deep at nationals, you're not going to be winning anything too big. That's that's the story, man. That's the storyline. You know, you want people to put some respect on your name. You got to come big, you know, when the lights are the brightest. And, like I was saying earlier to Evan Essenberg, you know, JMU great alumni. Hunter Stewart is your February dodgeball of the month, and he's been just teeing off as his teammates, 44 and 5, Swar and Hawker did a team throw. I'm pretty sure that was just a timeout call, and that's just mm -hmm. good grief. Honestly, Hunter just looks like he just came here on a mission. Dude looks serious, dude looks locked in. He's not playing around. He's, he's not, man. He's not. He's not. Do you remember how did how did Penn State go out at Nationals last year? Do you remember? So they lost against Ohio in the round of sixteen, and that's mm. how Ohio was able to get to the Elite Eight. However, Penn State did have like that big victory against Ohio State, which was yes. which was considered an upset. Because um, a lot of people wasn't expecting that. That's the one where the guy lived for it, lived for the last few yep. minutes, yeah. Yeah, that's when Shaggy pretty much mm -hmm. just bled out <laughs> at least three plus minutes, and just 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 made it very difficult. So, yeah. This doesn't look too good for Maryland. <laughs> mm, nah, it, it doesn't. Caleb Dixon, dangerous catcher though. But very very dangerous it's catcher. Be tough. Best catcher on Maryland, without question. That's for sure. Small and athletic. And he's also an Air Force cadet as well. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes, sir. I will say my compliments to Maryland. They got a lot of guys who probably aren't that well-known but can catch. Can and what goes oh. down. And Hunter Stewart hit my man below the belt. One player left to be. It's up to Caleb Dixon. He needs to catch. Really... Really needs his catch. Yes, he got it. Wow. He got it. Catching out. Catching out. Yes, it's a catching out. But he did his job. That's going to be tough, though, having not Maryland's best catcher not I, in anymore for this team throw situation. I know. Oh, my wow. God. And once again, Hunter Stewart. It, like I said, I'm, I'm literally running out of hyperboles for this man. This is ridiculous. If you, if you say a compliment every time he makes a good play, you just you know you've said ten compliments already. We got eighteen minutes left in the game. That's, that's just crazy. It's it's going to be a game full of compliment compliments. Then, if he just continue to put on a clinic like that, at at some point, I'm, I'm just going to be very transparent. At some point, if I'm Maryland, if I want any shot, 
and I mean any shot of even. I feel like I got I got to thought where you're going here. No, 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 you good. If I if I'm Maryland, want to have any shot of even getting back into this game, I gotta find a way to slow down Penn State. Because mm-hmm. Penn State, they're gonna play fast. They're gonna play chaotic. They're gonna, they're gonna play with no sense of control. And right now, they pretty much has been pressuring Maryland in a way that they they haven't been pressured in a while. I, I gotta agree with you. Maryland honestly looks frazzled there. There there have been a few Penn State throws where I feel like, especially I mean, my man got hit below the belt. That that's a catchable area for a lot of a lot of players. If that, you're if you're paying attention, that's that's kind of right like your stomach. I mean, you just kind of hinge a little bit of the hips, and that that's a good catch, and you're getting your body behind it. And I feel like a few other missed catches by Maryland have been had, so they right. could turn around, but they've got to make those catches if they want to. Right, and that's what I'm saying too, because. You know, you know this as well as I do, White. Maryland is a catching team. Mm-hmm. They pride themselves on their defense. They pride themselves on the ability to slow the pace down and play their style. But Penn State is not giving they're, – they're not giving them an inch mm-hmm. whatsoever. Penn, Penn State dominating from the rush, and then they just carry it on. That's, that's – wow. I will say so. There's been some push for uh, Adam Butts, number nine Adam Butts, as an All-American candidate, and I feel like he's really got to show it here against high-tier competition like Penn State. Yeah, if he's, if he's being talked about as such a good thrower, you'd like to see him. You'd like to see him show up in a game like this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's just the thing too, you know, because I, I know Adam. Adam's a good guy, really good guy. You know, really easy to talk to. Um, he is the strongest. He, he has the strongest arm on the East Coast, uh, without question. Definitely got the strongest arm on his team. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and folks been saying, yo, Adams should be first team All-American. And Trent Schaefer pretty much has said absolutely not. Uh-huh. Second team, sure. Third team, yes. First team, absolutely not. So if I'm Adam, I'm Maryland, I feel some type of way about that. And really got to put on a statement. But like I said, right now, Hunter Stewart, you know, once again, taking out number 11 walls from Maryland. As you can see right here on our left-hand corner, just getting ready to throw. Yep. Wow. And and again, Hunter. that's another kill. And that's, another, that's another ball that I feel like could have maybe been caught. I mean, it that's could, not an easy catch, but no. two, two kills for Hunter Stewart and two times where a Maryland player got their body behind the ball but didn't secure the catch. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Maryland is a catching team. They pride themselves being able to make those difficult catches in the most stressful situation. But Penn State is literally forcing Maryland to try to catch in the transition game, and they don't want to do that. They want to catch more at their pace, and this is not their pace. I will say a tough situation for Adam is over there when he's playing right corner and you've got Cloud in the left corner. He was really pinned down over there. I'd, I'd like to see Adam kind of free himself up here now that one of Penn State's best players is, isn't pinning him down. That's that's easier said than done because now Hunter Stewart's playing the middle. So, And you got Caleb over here on the left. Who's, he's obviously a deep, a great, great threat to catch, but he's not as big of a threat to throw. So Hunter's, Hunter's really only concerned with one side right now. And right. A Hunter can... Hunter Stewart concerned with only one side of the court, it's going to be dominant. That's just, that's just a fact. Correct. So, if I'm Maryland in this case, knowing that I don't have man advantage, as Joey Tiger get a wonderful kill against number 25 of Maryland. One thing I'm noticing, I'm feeling like Maryland, they're not retreating very quickly. No. And if I were Maryland here, I'd look to, I'd look to say, hey, we either got to not throw from as far up, if that's the situation, work a little more on counter throwing. Or you got to get back, maybe have a person or two sit back a little bit, pump fake to stop the dude from running at him. Because yeah, they're, they're running free, and sometimes Maryland's going to block it, but the fact is that's just an advantage throw for Penn State every single time. They'll take that every time they get that throw from so close. Exactly. There's another one from Hunter. I mean, and, and so basically, in layman's turn, what we're saying is Penn State, more firepower, and, and looking more athletic than Maryland. And Maryland has to figure out a way how to make an adjustment, which the, the way how things are going right now, I, I feel like Maryland has to get a point within this half. For sure. If they want any chance of winning. At, that's at, for sure. at any chance. Because right now, this is a Penn State pace. 
Well, you imagine. So we're recommend we're recommending some uh, some changes. I think Maryland has, if I'm correct, four coaches here. Yes. So you feel like they, you know. I wonder what they're going to be telling Maryland here at the half, or even here if, if uh, they end up taking this point here, what their game plan is going to be. So, something got to change. Something got to change. Penn State is slowing down a little bit. This could be an opportunity for Maryland to kind of get back within this game. But they're going to need some kills, and more importantly, they're going to need some catching because they need bodies right now. Penn State outnumbered them body-wide. Wow, good throw from Caleb. That was a good, yeah. He, he's been improving his throws over the past several years. And wow. Oh, you got to hit. <sighs> I will say a big compliment to Adam. He's a he's a pretty big guy. And yes. he when he backs up, he can back up and drop to his knees, which is something very impressive to me. I cannot do that. I don't know how he does it. Fully backing up, drop straight to his knees. I'm still trying to figure out how you bend your body to make some of those acrobatic <laughs> dodges and catches. Cause that would just tear my entire back up, man. I'm serious. Well, you know, unfortunately, right now, my uh, so I've been dealing with a bit of a finger injury. I can really only I used to be a bit of a I used to be more of a thrower. Now that I've got this finger injury, I'm really only throwing. I'd like to throw three or fewer throws per point, just because it really aggravates my finger. Wow. So I've tried to just transition to becoming a catcher. That's been my main fact. Uh, uh, practice, you know, kind of, kind of strategy. I actually haven't, I haven't pinched a ball with my right hand since I played at Beast. Wow. So today, I, on doctor's orders, I've got wrap on my finger and taking some anti-inflammatories and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm pivoting to a bit more of a catching game where the flexibility is necessary for sure. You, you heard it right there from the man himself, ladies and gentlemen, because White got one of the best throws on his team. So now him transitioning to a catcher. It's, it's good because UVA got strong catching, uh, but it's tough because they just lost one of their stronger throwers. But you, your present is still like a matchup nightmare for opponents. So you, UVA is very happy that you're still on the court. We got we got a long, lot of young guys. So in the next two years, we're actually only going to be graduating two people. I'm the only senior, and we only got one junior. So at this point, it's, it's kind of up to the younger guys to step up, you know, and I'm, I'm confident in that and them to do that so oh yeah you, you've been doing a great job really just you know just continuing the tradition you know with zach you know Dermot, um you know jeremy shaw um and i forgot my other man last jay corman yeah jay corman man like you you've been you've been holding your job you know as president captain to a clinic and i'm, I'm really proud of what uva has been able to do um over the past couple of seasons. Like, y'all don't really get an opportunity to travel as much, mm -hmm. uh, but when you do, you know, y'all definitely show up, you know, in a big wow, way. great catch. Speaking of showing up, number one from Penn State with a grown man catch, And it's great, to, it's great to be here for at the, if I'm not, if I'm correct, the first East Coast Dodgeball Cup, yep. I believe, right? Yes, sir. So, wow. This is the kind of thing where, as the East Coast region hopefully grows, you'll, you'll see this will be more and more of an event, kind of like Michigan and Ohio have. Yep. It'll be awesome to kind of see that grow and know that we were here as, as part of the first one. Absolutely. All right, so. All right, so probably the first time in a while that Penn State kind of been pushed on the back line. This is now more. Oh. That looked like a dirty block to me. Yeah. This is more of Maryland pace. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I'm not seeing any throwers in for Maryland. And I, I will say, I, I know it looks like Maryland's been more in this one. I'm not sure Hunter Stewart's thrown a ball for the last, I don't know, five or so minutes. And I think that might have something to do with what you're seeing here. Kind of spreading, spreading it around, knowing if, if this game in, against Maryland seems like it might be in hand, he's going to be a very important player against, you know, against us and against JMU. Correct. Absolutely. All right, so the pace has slowed down considerably. So we went from being very fast paced to more, well, you, you can't do that. I don't care what pace you're doing, you cannot throw a soft change up. Back to back, back to back contributions right there by Penn State now taking out number 27 of Maryland. Oof, and uh, oh boy. I will say I was, I've been impressed, though. So I'm reading the roster here. I, I actually haven't seen a Penn State play in person. John Hartley, number 69. He's got a cannon over there on the left side filling in when, uh, when Cloud's out. Dang. Right on cue. There he goes. From the freshman. 
Good grief. Yeah, you out. You, you out, buddy. You got hit. You, yeah, you, you got you got hit, man. One play left to be. Oh, okay. I guess, guess it's still calm. Yeah, 22 is out. I was like, wait a minute. What's going on? There we go. And just like that, the score is down 3-0 to zero in favor of Penn State. If we could get near in that Maryland huddle, what do you think they're saying right now? Oh, my God. Um, slow the game down. We got plenty of time. I know it looks rough, but the score is 3-0. It's not 4-0. Me, there is no running clock. Slow the game down. Let's use, you know, this next eight minutes and 46 seconds to play our style of dodgeball, and let's get a point. I mean, the most you can really do is just play the point that's in front of you. You know, that's you get a point before this half, and thing, things look a little different. You lose a point. You lose the last point of this half, and things look like they're pretty much over. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if four zeros happened in the history of the NCDA. It's, I mean, we, well, now... Now, now I'm out. Now I'm dating myself a little bit, but I, now maybe not so much of the running clock, right? But you know, I, I've definitely been on the losing end of some lopsided losses, where you know it was six zero, you know, before <laughs> halftime, right? Um, but we we don't really see it as much, but yeah, I mean, I want to say. Maybe recently at the Slugfest in Kent State, there might have, there might have been a situation where, and, and again, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, and I, and I will gladly admit that. But I think Ohio State almost pushed Michigan State 4-0 and almost had them on a running clock. Wow. Um, but, you know, it, it, it can happen. And, and, and that's why if I'm Maryland this situation, like, I either have to score a point or I can't give up this point right. in this half. Because if I do, it's now now I gotta deal with the running clock and that's that's it. So it's an interesting choice to me to send send your best player Adam Butts at a at a center ball here on the rush. I know it's it's not tradition to throw on the rush here in the East Coast, but that just feels a little, feels a little risky for my taste, I'll say. I understand that, but if I'm Maryland, that pretty much means that I have the confidence that Adam Buss get out, and he's the first player out, I make a catch, I can get him back in. I see. That's, that's how I'm looking at it. So Maryland got some pretty capable coaches, you know, Daniel Fennar, Zach Fennar, um, Connor Engelman, Con you know, Connor, you know, they, they have to implement this. Like, whatever strategy that they're going to implement, they have to make it work. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is now looking way more Maryland-style dodgeball. I will say I'd love to see someone on Maryland take a leadership position here. You know, Connor Engel, like you said, he graduated uh, yep. in December, I believe. Yep. And he would be he would be very vocal on the court. I'm not hearing much from Maryland here. And I feel like a big, a big part of keeping your spirits high when you're losing a game like this down three, but it's not over yet. I'd love to hear some of them maybe take a leadership position, not, not just listen to their coaches here. Uh, agree. Agree. I mean – I think that's one of the things that the Terrapins are currently missing right now is that voice on the coach. Nothing wrong with coaches. I'm always going to be an advocate for coaches. We, we have seen that teams who have coaches have played better. Um, but you need that player, you know, who can bring whatever the coaches are saying into light and also make adjustments. And just right now, it's, it's, it's very quiet. Very quiet for the Terrapins. You know, Good cool. God! Sheesh. You know, one thing I've been trying to instill in my players is, like, really anyone on the team can be vocal. Anyone can be a leader. We've been doing practice drills where, you know, we play a game and I'll just appoint someone on the team to be the leader of the team and we all listen to them for that game. I feel like it's made a lot of my guys, they're very willing to talk during the game, tell each other what to do, what not to do. And I feel like that's really helped us a lot, be more cohesive. Yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's one of the biggest things, you know, that's that's one of the things that made dodgeball great, you know, the communication, the strategy, the understanding of your teammates, 
understanding when things are going well, but things aren't going well, you know. So I'm really glad. There we go. Now, now, now Maryland is playing the way how they should be playing. And this, I, d I just watched Hunter decide to call for a ball, and I think he might be mad. Yep. So we'll see how this goes. Yep. He's saying not on my watch. Yep. Yep. I mean, and I talked to Hunter. Hunter is a quiet guy, you know. But, and here we go. But his play does the talking. So sometimes you need to be vocal. Nothing wrong with that. And sometimes you just need action. And I mean, yeah. he has a quiet confidence, and it's for a, a reason. Very, it's very dominant. Very quiet confidence. Like he knows who he is, and he's comfortable. He ain't trying to be nothing else beside himself. And you got to imagine if you're one of the players on his team standing next to him, you know if a ball goes to him, it's being caught. Yep. And if he's calling a throw, you let him cook. Yep. And he goes off. Yep. And that's that's comforting. That lets you play more solid, more confident as well. Yep. Yep. And that's, I mean, that right there is just, you know, different communication styles, right? He's taking the lead. His team is following him. Wow. And good, they just got to kill. There. They just got to kill simply because Hunter Stewart say, go. And he didn't say anything. He just ran. And his whole team just understood the assignment, and they ran with him, and they took that player out. And that was good recognition by number 40. He, he's not on the roster here as far as I can see. Oh, Zachary Bean. But he saw that um, Wells in there was very distracted by Hunter Stewart on the right, on yep. their left side. He came from the right side, didn't see it at all. Easy shoulder shot. That, that's, that's good attention from him, and he's only a sophomore. He's played one year, so that's good recognition. Yes. But Maryland's looking a lot better at this point. Ooh, can, can he get up? Yes, yeah, team catch. All right, so Caleb is still good. Yeah, but Maryland's looking a lot better in this point. Much, much better in this point. This is what they need. And I saw number number four freshman Andrew Myers. He looked for a cross there. You got a guy in the left corner for Penn State who doesn't look particularly attentive next to Hunter. And I, I'd love to see Myers take that cross if he's if he's confident in it. Yeah. Agreed. Good draw right there by Dixon. Solid research throw. Low and away. Just making it hard for Penn State to even do anything with it. That's a very frustrating thing about playing Caleb is he'll throw eight reset throws in a row. None of them are hitting you. No. It's very frustrating. Ooh. Wow. The transition catch was successful, taking out number 42, Rodriguez, and that change. We still haven't been calling Adam Butts' name very much. No, which is, which it's concerning to me. No, and that's and that's the frustrating part. That's that is the most frustrating part. Oh, there we go. And he gets Hunter Stewart. There we go. Now right things on cue. Now things should be a little bit easier for for Maryland. If I'm Maryland, it's now time to apply some pressure. Mm -hmm. But you got to make some catches at forty at twenty two. Parker goes down that exchange. You gotta imagine here now. Now Adam feels feels more confident. I might we might be seeing him open fire here on the right side. He needs if to. He doesn't feel very threatened. He he needs to. He should look. If if I'm if I'm Adam, I'm looking at every single player at Penn State and saying you cannot beat me. And if I'm if I'm Maryland right now, two two minutes forty five seconds left in the half. That's not no time. That's plenty of time. So I, I I'm seeing Caleb. I will say it's plenty of time, but you can't waste throws. I watched Caleb throw what I would consider to be essentially a reset throw, wait, and I feel like oh, oh wait, ball's over. Ball's over, but but wait a minute, but doesn't that doesn't that? Oh no, that's tough. Oh, it was a timeout. Okay, that was a timeout. Timeout. Was that Penn State? That was Penn State first timeout. So they got one. Smart play right there by Penn State because I'm trying to figure out. Adam threw that ball, hit him, but did it hit him before or after the timeout was recognized? Well, if the ball's already in the air. Then he should be out. Then he's out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I will say I, I do think an underused thing in the NCDA is the timeouts. A lot of times, you know, people go into the half with two timeouts. Even if – what are you holding them for is my question, you know? Because if it can even save you two balls, would you rather save two balls or save no balls? I mean, that's I'm, that's I'm, what it is to I'm me. I'm always going to save two if I can, especially when numbers are down. Especially when you end up in one of those weird situations where you've got a ball in your zone, but it's kind of near the attack line. You can't really get it. For me, that's that's an easy timeout call. 
eight easy. That's too often you end the game with you get in the game with all your timeouts. Agreed. But yeah, Maryland got a little bit, it pretty much two minutes to get a point. Mm -hmm. And they got to make the move now. And we do still have a captain in for Penn State. Wow. Great kill, kill by Adam Buck right there. That's, that's what he got to do. He got to look at every single Penn State player right now and basically say, you cannot beat me. My team will beat you. That's, that's the mentality they got to have. Wow. Love that throw from Jimenez. Number 12, Jimenez, the, ca the captain on the floor right now. And I'd love to see him look like it here in the last one minute and 30. Jimenez is a problem once he gets going. A big problem. Another kill wow. for Buck. Now, now he's looking like that All-American that we know he's capable. Ooh, there we go. There goes. That, now, now they got to get back. And you see Daniel Fanar basically demanded his team to get back, try to get these long throws. Wow. That was a great reset throw. Yes, it was. Another wow. kill for Butts. And he's got to live for one minute here. Number 44, Jack Sawyer. He's a freshman. All right. Will Penn State call a timeout? They will not. And there he goes. Wow. Just what we were saying. You just got to make it 3-1 and see what happens. That's, that's it, man. That's it. Like I said, the game would have been vastly different. And I mean vastly different if it wasn't. But now Maryland still got a chance. Ooh. And, you know, one thing I know for this tournament, other other uh, regions that are bigger do play a bracket style. This is a round robin, so every team's going to play three games. Yep. It is important to know if, if teams tie, there are some tiebreakers as far as uh, margin of victory goes. Yep. So this 3-1... JMU just won 6-1, so Penn State's got to be looking. The fact is Penn State and JMU, the top two contenders. Yep. Penn State's got to be seeing that and saying, I see your 6-1, I raise you. Something hopefully better for than 6-1 if you're, if you're Penn State. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, but great job by Maryland. Make it did a, the adjustments that they desperately needed. Um, really just giving himself a chance, you know, to get back within this match. Um, so what do you think What do you think Maryland did well there, and what do you think Penn State didn't do so well that allowed for, for that, game, that point to go the way it did? So for starters, um, Maryland did a much better job controlling the court at their pace. Maryland plays a very methodical, slow-paced style of dodgeball. So them being able to control the court, stack their players up in their formation, get the balls where they wanted to, basically forced Penn State to be on the back line. So even when they were pushing up, um, Maryland was able to counter them the way how they wanted to. Not fast, not chaotic, just very slow pace. And so even when the numbers got smaller and smaller because Maryland was able to knock down a lot of their stronger throwers. When things got kind of even, Maryland was like, okay, cool. Now we can now we can play the off style dodge well. Now we can control this. What Penn State didn't do well was essentially they just put their foot off the gas. They look at it like, cool, well, 3-0, cool. Things going our way. We're going to make it 4-0, and that's pretty much what happened. They, they kind of just lost momentum pretty much at, at that half. And, and maybe, just maybe, just rely just a little bit too much on Hunter Stewart just kind of just, just handling, right. you know, that responsibility of just taking over. I mean, the way I see it, if, if you're a slow-paced team, yep. the slow-paced teams tend to be able to make the fast-paced teams drop down to their style. Yep. Because if you play slow and the other team's, you know, throwing balls all the time, they're just losing ball control. So the fact is the slow team should be able to set the pace. And if I'm a Maryland coach right now, I'm saying you don't need to rise 
to the pace of Penn State. That Correct. would just be a mistake. Correct. Me. Correct. You, you, you should, like, because cause when I saw Maryland running up down the court like that, I was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Like, I never, like, and I've been, I've been watching Manly Dodge Ball for a long time. I have never seen him run that fast. Right. So I'm just like, whoa, you, you're not playing your style. Right and, and if you're a catching team, why would you run that fast? You know what I mean? You, you, the, right. the fact is catching's harder when you're moving. This, this dynamic catching is so much tougher than this backline catching. Right. And if you're going to shy away from your strengths, which is backline catching, Correct. you're just asking to lose these points. Right. That's why I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, what, what's going on? Like, and not saying that Maryland can't make transition catching because I, I've seen it. But you, you just said it right there. That's that's more athletic. That's more difficult. That's, you know, that's more – and that's more of a timing thing too because, you know, that's like split-second reactions there. And Maryland, Maryland that's, just, that's just not how they want to play. It's like I was saying earlier about, you know, if Maryland retreats slow and they try to block an aggressive Hunter Stewart throw running at them, they're going to block it some of the time in the same way that sometimes you're going to make that transition catch, but you're going to make the backline catch way more. Yes. So if, if you settle for a suboptimal situation, you're just asking to go down over the course of time. I mean, it's a long game, so right. the numbers will just work out. Right, and, right. and that's, that's what I was saying earlier. If I'm Maryland, just slow the game down. Because if you slow the game down, you are more than capable of getting what you want because you're going to play the time to your advantage even though you're down. But if you play fast, and we just saw what happened when Penn State played fast and the way how they want to play it, it ain't going to take them long to get two points. It won't. It won't. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and they had two points in, I think, maybe eight minutes or so. And, and that's what I'm saying. And so you, you want the time to be your friend. And, and how you do that if you're Maryland is you slow it down. You don't want to play fast because now you're in a shootout. So, but but they still got time. They still got time, you know. I'm curious to see how Penn State comes out here. You know, you lose that point. A lot of times these teams that are favored, they feel like they didn't play so well. They didn't, they didn't play their best. They weren't fully focused. And if they drop a point, they come out firing on the next point. So I think we might see some fireworks here. Would not be surprised. Would not be surprised, even in the slightest sense. I, I really wouldn't. What are your opinions on the new JMU jerseys? Clean. Clean? I'd have to just, agree. Just, just clean. Straight fire. I mean, the, the, white, the white jerseys are, are great. You know, I believe the great, you know, Doug Schilling um, from JMU arguably second best JMU dodgeball player of all time came up you know with the initial design for the white jerseys um, but these black ones are super clean can't go wrong with it and once again this is this is how Maryland wants to play this is this is their style like I said the players their stack in a very unique formation that allows them to kind of like even if you throw at them, like, it's going to be very difficult. This, right, is, this right, is what Maryland has to do. Right now I'm watching Cloud hold a ball with the grip, and it looks like he's going to fire on whoever throws here on this right side next. Yup. Oh, Hunter applying pressure. Oh, ready. They caught wow. just sleeping, man. You, you got to – that's where, as he was mentioning earlier, communication would have never allowed that to happen. And that's the kind of team play that – that Penn State has been showing that Maryland hasn't. Hunter, Hunter Stewart walks up there, and we've got Cloud and the rest of the guys here on the right side also walking up, you know, applying pressure to the point where he can't look in two directions at once. That's that's crazy. That's that's crazy, man. This There is no way that Hunter Stewart should have been able to get that far up in the middle. And if you're a Maryland player and you're back there with the ball, you gotta right. be, you got to be pump faking at Hunter Stewart. Right, I, that's I, what I'm seeing. I tell my guys all the time, if you pump fake at someone, they're kind of forced to stop. If, yes. they, don't, if they don't stop, they're going to get out more times than they want. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And just like that, Maryland just lost. They, t they just lost the court. Now they're on their back line. And they are a catching team, but we've got, we've got Adam Butts' second Big line. catch. Wow. Big catch right there by Rodriguez. He needed that against Cloud. 
That's what Maryland has to do. And Cloud's a great, powerful thrower, but that, that was right in his chest. And if you're going to throw at a catcher's chest, you're not going to like the result. I don't know. That's, that's just too easy for Adam Rodriguez, man. That's too easy. Light work, no reaction. As Trent Schaefer would say, good God. Wow. You're not getting that ball Almost back. hits the ceiling in it, here. It did. Well, almost. You're right. And we got, we got a big ceiling in there, too. Wow. Good team throw coming in. A nice cross by Ian Robb. Man, that's crazy. Hunter Stewart on the prowl looking for a cross here. It's some, everybody need to be talking, paying attention, something. And we haven't given much talk about Joey Tiger, but Drop I've catch. been loving the aggression of Joey going for these catches here. You see him on yes. the ground, on his knees, all the time diving for these catches, and that's why he's such an important part of their team. Indeed. Just a really solid all-around player. Oh, indeed. He's also one of my favorite players in the lead to watch. Yeah. Oh, did it? Did not have, Rob did not have enough loft. It is ground. Almost got Chris. Just not enough. It just died like a millisecond too soon. And Maryland has not been seeing any of these crosses from me and Rob at no. all. I've seen two or three, and, you know, they haven't hit, but it's been luck more than it's been attentiveness. Right. Oh, Dang. wow. Wow, headshot. Headshot right there by Joey Tiger. And Penn State there didn't see that cross coming from Chris. but They did not, but they don't even feel. Flew between them two. That's crazy. They didn't even see the cross, and they didn't even care about the cross. <laughs> That's how unbothered they look right now. If I'm Maryland, I, I feel some type of way. Just me personally, just as a former player on the East Coast, I will feel some type of way. If you just mosley just taking your time and you're not even looking my direction. Well if I'm a leader on Maryland right now, I'm, I'm telling my guys, listen, you gotta you gotta earn the respect you get. Yes. So speaking of earning respect, that was a great catch right there by Chris. Much needed. Oh, well, we're bringing in number nine, Adam Butts here. Yes. Let's see him fire away. Yes. Wow. Yes. Good, good attempt by Joey, like we were talking about there again. Wow, Ooh, and that got him. Man. What that's, a throw. Uh, that's a heartbreaker right there from Maryland because they just got him back in. Now he's back to the bench, deep within the bench too. So they're pretty much going to be playing this point without him. Maryland needs some catching. We're noticing Caleb Dixon be left at the end of all these points. They're, I think, specifically not targeting him at the beginning because he's such a strong catcher. Yep. They're kind of they're saying, you know, we're going to wait till we're in a better position of team throw there at the end. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's basically what they're doing. But Caleb has done a great job of making himself more of a thrower in time. He's definitely improved in the years that I've seen him play. Without sure. question. And he's also one of the very few players of Maryland that – Ooh, wow. great catch. And great vision on the cross that time. That, there you go. And that cross also protected his teammate too, number, number two, Chris, as well. And that's freshman Andrew Myers. You see, as you play dodgeball more, you know, you get a sense of he saw that cross come two times. Third time, you know, it's fool me once, shame on, you know, shame on you. Easy but catch with Joy Tiger. Be fooled the third time. Yeah. Wow, oh, Hunter what a grab by Hunter Stewart. But then Caleb Dixon get a catch of his own. And one, and, and as I was saying before about Caleb Dixon, smallest play on the court, biggest heart on the court. Wow. <laughs> Good God. And Hunter Stewart just had a seat. He was like, you know what, let me just sit down real quick. Because <laughs> Adam ball, Rodriguez, man. two tough catches. That's the kind of catch that gets you not thrown yes. out for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. those, are, those are what we like to call statement catches. Like, that, that tells you right there, I don't care what you're doing, I'm not afraid of you, come at me. And the tough situation for Maryland here, we don't have many, many of their most notable players on the court, and they're kind of buried there at the back of the line, which is, which is a tough scene for them as they go forward here in the point. 
That's true, but the players that are on Maryland right now, they've been they've been doing what they're supposed to have been doing. I mean, so, yeah, don't so, throw at Rodriguez. No, don't do that. That's so so give the current players on Maryland credit because they're still keeping their team in it. And as I was saying earlier, you know, Caleb Dixon, smallest player on the court, biggest heart on the court, man plays with zero fear, zero fear. And I've seen my man literally push up several times against these stronger players just trying to give his team, you know, some balls back or some potential catching opportunity. Wow. Nice stop by Joey there. And just like that, Penn State only had three balls now. Well, no two, so they don't have a clock. Not bad. Oh, okay, Caleb. Okay. That was that was a respectable throw. That wasn't a reset throw. That was a that was a kill shot throw. That just so happened to be said. And you wonder who's throwing for Maryland here? Well, it seems like it's question. on the left-hand side. Adam Rodriguez should be throwing at some point. Ooh! Mm. Swoboo just kind of just, just missed time that just a little bit. And I did not see Cloud on the court. That's the problem. So you got Hunter Stewart out, but Cloud's still on the court. Oh. And Penn State, they're doing what Maryland was doing earlier with the throwing a few too many balls, leaving themselves super vulnerable there on the counterattack. And you was mentioning pump faking, right? Mm -hmm. Caleb Dixon just did two pump fakes, basically just forcing Cloud to go back. So even though Cloud knows that Dixon is not a power thrower for Maryland, he still had to respect his throw based off of what he'd been doing within this particular point. And even if your throw is slow, if someone's 10 feet away, you know what I mean? That, that, that's the threat of the pump fake. Yeah, that, that's still going to put enough fear in you to get back. Joey Tiger almost got caught on that one. Caleb is holding his ground, and he's pushing. Uh, good good block. block, and here he goes. Wow, good block. Good block by Myers there. Woo! Oh, strong block. block. Got him. Wow. Got him. Got to wonder why he turns his back to run away, though. I don't know, man. See, the, the moment you do that, you just gave yourself up. When you're facing the ball, there's always a chance to catch it. You that's, always that's got point. a chance. But if you turn your back, no chance. I think we're going to see Joey Tiger step up here. It's, if, if, if there's a time for him to step up, it would be now. Like I said, he's one of my favorite players to watch. And I know his mom is watching, so For sure. if he's going to step up, now would definitely be the time to do it. And he's more than capable, too. He's been looking for these crosses, and I'm wanting him to take one. <laughs> oh, and what a throw. Man, just missed that the target. Him. 11 Dang. got hit, and Joey's out. And just like that, Adam just... Rodriguez has been the difference maker within this point. Even when Adam Buck got out, Adam Rodriguez, number 42, has been put in on a clinic. Two big catches, one against Hunter Stewart, and some timely kills. And just like that, Penn State have four players now, and now they're on the 10 count. And he's taken two absolute darts to the chest. Yes. you got to imagine he's got, he's got that big red circle on his chest right now, but it doesn't hurt so bad when you catch it. That's nah, what I always say. No, nah, I promise you he's going to feel a lot better if he can find a way to get this upset win against Penn State. And earlier we were talking about Penn State going for point differential, and here they're worried about just even blowing the second point and going to a potential tying point. And like I said, you may think, oh, okay, it's under 15 minutes, but this is Maryland-style play, so the clock is their friend. For Penn State, the clock has actually been their enemy. Wow. Big catch. Big catch right there by number one. Much needed. Pretty sure that just put his team back not well, not quite back to the 15 count, and a but great, and a great pump fake by number 14 right there, Marty Gold, just caused Caleb from and oh. Rodriguez once again. 42 Adam Rodriguez. Every time Penn State does something positive, he counters with a catch or a kill, and they're back to the 10 count. And we've seen a lot of people susceptible to crosses here yes. at this point in particular. I'm curious to see if. Any, anyone in the huddle makes a point about that on either side, just to watch out. Other than that one catch by Andrew Myers earlier in the game, they've been getting them. 
and, and goal goes down that it changed. Another kill right there by Adam Rodriguez. Three players left. Oh, no, oh. he dropped it. Wow. Dixon had it all the way. Just missed opportunity. Rodriguez and, and finally goes down. He finally goes cross. down. This might be the break that Penn State is looking for because now they're like, we can take him. And that was a good eye by Jacob Lennon. So you're, you know your teammates might be weak to the cross. You can't tell them right then. Make them more attentive. But if he knows that Rodriguez is looking for that cross, he just nails him right there. Yep. While he's caught, caught looking. This point right here is the difference maker right here. Maryland has to get this point to have any shot. They cannot go down 4-1. to one. They need to make this 3-2. to two. They cannot go down 4-1. to one. They're going to have any shot. And with Jimenez, Dietrich, and, and Leonard all in, this is a very strong lineup here for Penn State. Woo! Man, just, just missed the target. Not by much either. Ooh. Not by much. Number four is, is really throwing his whole body into it. My goodness. It's been an impressive play from him at this point. Ooh, wow, man. I'm looking for the cross. That's a deal breaker. Ooh, man, Merrill needs a catch. Maryland needs to catch Meyer. He was playing so well. He was. Oh, you got to catch that. If oh. we remember back towards the beginning of the point, uh, Andrew Meyer saved Chris Duchak yep. on that cross catch earlier. Yes, he did. And he timeout call. Good time. a bunch of other great Good plays. timeout right there by Daniel Fanon. My goodness. Oh, man. This has been an exciting, exciting game. There's a lot, there's a lot to see from this game. Yep, and I – my apologies, y'all. I got so caught up in the game, I forgot to start the clock. My apologies for that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what happens sometimes. You kind of get lost in the sauce. And the game, this, 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 it's been a long point, but it's been a fun point. What do you think Penn State's talking about in their timeout here? What are they saying? <sighs> Don't throw a catch. <laughs> Don't th don't throw a catch. Put it's got it's got to be something to the effect of you know the dudes they're looking across the court at Maryland yep. there and they know it's not Maryland's best throwers yep. per se. And the tough thing about when you're left alone throwing, you got to throw every ten seconds. And yep. if you're not a confident thrower, you end up in a balls over situation or floating a ball a little too high in position for a catch. So I'd have to agree with you. Yeah, exactly. Um, because right now, based off of what we're seeing. From both player, from both set of players, from both teams, Penn State is going to be the aggressor, which means that they're going to try to force Maryland in the transition game for sure. And with the Maryland timeout here, they're in a good position to correct because Penn State's clock resetting, Maryland's not. Right. Let's see how this rundown goes. I'm curious how far Daniel Fernald told his players that they're allowed to step up. Sometimes they say half court. Sometimes you say, you know, a little bit farther, but. We'll see, and we'll see how Penn State's looking to run them down. We know Jacob Leonard's been throwing a lot of crosses, and we do see the half court, like I was saying. Yep. Big catch. What a catch. Big grown man catch right there by number 22, and he has every right to chirp, every right. Could not. Yeah, Parker, you do your thing. What about the catch? All right, so ball. He caught over. a ball. Yeah, yeah, whoa. You caught a ball, it's a reset. Right, and that's what Fernar is talking about. The catch should have reset. And they're going to fix this. They're going to fix that's this. That's what I'm saying. It should it should he not. He caught it, yeah. Yeah, he caught it. He caught it. That, that should be a new 10 seconds. It shouldn't be balls over. Yeah, you got you to gotta throw those balls back. And what a catch it was. Let's go back to that. Sliding on his knees to the right side. He, he able to get his body behind it, and no doubt that was no doubt about that catch stuck right to his chest. He they he knew they was gunning for him. I literally said earlier, Penn State was going to be the aggressor. It was going to play aggressive. So Parker was like, "All right, cool. If you're going to be if you're going to be aggressive, I'm going to use your aggressiveness against y'all and use it for my advantage." And that's what he did. And it's so impressive to catch like that when you're sliding to the right. You know, we see a lot of those catches. Rodriguez here taking two bullets to the chest, but right, like right there, sliding, catching that, securing that, seeing that ball when you're getting team thrown like that. That's 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 a lot tougher than it looks, even. Not easy. And just like that, that that changes how this point's being played out because now Maryland, they're not necessarily going to be aggressive, 
But, but what they're going to do, they're going to take their pace and balls over. That's wow. Un- Neither of those were throws. That's unfortunate. That's, that's tough. I will say, maybe this is the position Maryland wants to be in. If they're going to keep catching like they have been with Parker there. You know what? You're right. You're right. Especially with Penn State, only two throwers. If you only got two players, you can only throw two balls. That's you know. That's true. Matt. And you wonder, are they going to go at 22 here since he's been since he's been the kind of dominant guy? Or are they going to try and pick him off later? I don't know, man. Only time will tell. I think I go at 22 here, and it looks like they will. Oh, and he gets hit. The second one, not the first. Got and him. again, he left himself open. Wow. Left himself way. He he went up too much. He went up too much. And that's what a bold performance there by the Penn State players. Man, that's just good core recognition. And they weren't just satisfied with the first kill. They saw the Maryland player overextend, and they yep. said, "We're gonna we're gonna capitalize yep. on that." Yep. Because if he would have just if he would just play the situation and just understood the situation, like, okay, cool. You you took out one of my players. Cool. It's still two. It's two, still two. Two. Two, meaning, two. Meaning, even if y'all do a team throw, still can only go after one person. But and the, I will say, like we were talking about the leadership of Maryland, you've got two, uh, I believe, two captains on the court. Or Jacob Leonard, not a captain, but a veteran player. You saw it right there with the experience, the communication. The second they got that first goal, they talked about what they were doing next. Yep. And that's how you capitalize. That, that's what wins you these close marginal points. Big what catch. a catch. Big catch. And it's up to number 12. And I will say one thing I noticed about a few of those team throws by those two, a lot of them were not in sync. You no, see two balls it? coming at totally different times, and that's that's not res- a recipe for success when it comes to a team throw. And, and I love what Daniel is doing right now. Bernard saying – you only have a ball. You don't have a clock. Relax. And I love. I, I would love that idea, but Jimenez is a great thrower here. That's true. So you, and by that same token, Jimenez has to watch out. Go. You gotta. You gotta take a shot. Did, that hit got him. him. Did it. Twenty-seven what a striker. Thrill. Big kill. Big opportunity for Maryland. Much needed. That. Wow. What a strange ending that was. But what a clutch play by Stryker. Wow. To come in, to be caught in in a situation like that and come up huge like that, that's awesome. And just like that, 10 minutes, 18 seconds. So Tim Stryker with the kill there, he's a senior, but it's his first year playing. That's got to feel incredible. That's, man. Game-winning kill. Wow. To make it 3-2 as well. Make it 3-2 now. Holy smokes. You know, Daniel Fennar, he's he's been telling me that, you know, we we had a couple of close games, you know, against JMU and Penn State and some of these tougher teams. You know, we kind of just let the opportunity slip by. I was like, you know, I I hear you, but, you know, y'all, you know, Y'all got to make some adjustments if you want to be in it. He was like, I bet. I got you. And I mean, when Maryland played JMU at UVA in a tournament last semester, they had them, I believe it was tied, and Maryland looked like they were going to win. I think it was five on one, but Nick Foss made a huge catch. Yep. And then and then Cheese was able to, I believe, win a three on one. Yep. All three kills. Yeah. So Maryland's, they've been knocking on the door, but it's a lot like UVA. You know, you can – you can knock on the door all you want, but are you ever going to win? Are you ever going to beat that team? That that part, though. That part. We got a slight pause here because scoreboard issue. That's fair. Oh, ooh, we saw a slide there. Uh, that should be not legal. No, that should either be a yellow card and or that play should be out. Surprised we didn't see that call. Uh, yeah. And we're going to see Hunter Stewart come out here firing. Hunter Stewart have seen enough. Especially early. I mean, yeah. yes, you risk being caught, but if you get in the front of the line with this team, Penn State, and they can catch like they can, you got to imagine he's coming back in. So yeah. that throws that throws advantage every time for him. Absolutely. In similar situation with Cloud here.
So see like Penn State had early on had changed their style of play completely. Seems like they're doing one reset throw and getting back. So basically they're pretty much telling Maryland, if you want to beat us, you have to come after us because we're not giving this to you. And with how slow Maryland plays, nine minutes, that's a lot. That's a lot of time for a lot of teams in the league. We could see this, you know, go down to the wire here. Could even time out all the way. I, think I wouldn't so. be surprised. I think so. Good block right there by Adam Butts. Again, Joey Tiger. I am curious why number 69, John Hartley, not in. I see him standing to the side. He was thrown very hard earlier, blocking down the right side. And I'm Got curious why, he's, why they've gotten away from that. Great kill right there by Adam Butts, taking out number one, Lena, on that uh, exchange. So, yeah, that's, well, yeah, but it looks like Penn State is like, we got the lead. We're not going to give up the lead. You're going to have to come after us if you want this game to go to overtime. And I think we can expect here, on this point for Maryland, most players who aren't Adam Butts throwing mostly reset throws just want to get Adam in a position to make a throw. Yeah. And Cloud goes at him. As he should. Oh, great job by Joey Tiger just not giving Maryland an inch. Bam! Headshot. Hunter. Wow. Brutal headshot. Brutal headshot. And butts, good block by Cloud. That's the thing about ball coming from a guy with a pitching background like Adam Butts. They'll drop like a curveball. You know, uh, the block is not as easy as it looks. No, it's not. And Rodriguez goes down that change. Cloud save himself. They aggressively. Yo, he's out. He got out. Dang. And, and, and Sherwood. Sherwood will go down that a change. And Sherwood, one of the one of the guys on Maryland who really focuses on pump faking a lot. Yes. And it does it does things that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet, but Pump faking does a lot, a lot for your team. So yep. that's that's a tough that's a tough out for them. Yeah, it freezes your opponent, also protects your teammates, and gives them a better throwing opportunity. Especially in a situation where a guy like Adam Butts, he needs a blocker for him. He needs a guy who's going to threaten the opponents if they if they really want to take over this point and win to go to overtime. Exactly. Easy what a catch, catch. by Joey. Easy catch with Joey Tiger. Take it out, number 11 wall for that change. And that's the thing that's so impressive about Joey. He's going, he's diving towards the ball to catch. Yeah, he's and not. What, what I tell my guys, it's the same thing with drop catching. It just, it shows a confidence that you want the ball coming at you. That makes you so much more intimidating to throw at. Yeah, because I see a lot of players in the league, even the great catchers, they're moving their body away from the ball to give themselves more time to kind of like snag the ball in. Tiger, and another catch. Mm, Tiger, on the other hand, is doing the opposite. He's like, I trust my catching ability so much, I don't need as much time to snag it. That's that's just nothing but pure confidence right there. And Hunter Stewart looking at 22 here. Hunter Stewart looking for a cross, but he's pinned by Adam. Oh, dang! Announce a curse. Joey Tiger goes down. Maryland still got time, but now they kind of have to push now because now the time is not their turn. It was earlier, but they're losing players. He goes down, and that's another kill for Hunter Stewart. And in my opinion here, if you're Adam Butts, you can't be throwing every ball at a guy with a ball. No. You know, you, you, you don't want to be caught, but the fact is, if Cloud's blocking and he's crouching, he's, it's going to be a very, very tough out. I'd say you only, you only get him out with that throw, you know, maybe one in ten times. So... That's not necessarily worth it, in my opinion. Hunter Seward just missed his target on that one. Ooh, did he reach? He reached. And, and are, they gonna, are they going to target Adam here with the team throw? I think they will. we got Ian, Rob, and Cloud I would. here together. I Adam's, would. Adam throws a cross. Huh, interesting. And they miss him. Oh, and they get him Ooh, on the, the second throw. The staggered team throw was successful. So smart by Ian Rob there. Crazy. And Ian Robb, the same player who was looking for those cheeky crosses earlier, so that's a big part of his game. <laughs> cheeky. <laughs> you feel some type of way about that, do you, White? I kid, I kid. Anywho, three players left from Maryland. They are now on a 10 count. They need catches. And he's looking for the cross again, and he wants Myers. And will he get him? And he will. And he gets him. Got him. Never wow. saw it coming. Never saw it coming. 
and that could be the deal breaker right there. And that's a classic situation. Ian Raba Jr., he's played for two years. Andrew Myers, he's played for, you know, this is his first season, and that's the kind of thing. If you're staring straight forward for 10 seconds, an experienced player is going to see you from the other side of the court, and they're going to pounce. That different vision, man. Wow. And that's a catch. And just like that, Penn State with the point. Just not enough time for Maryland to come back. Well, Dane. And that's a situation that really impresses me about Penn State. That's composure, because that's going to come up later in their games versus versus UVA and versus JMU. Even when it's close, you know, they step up, and we saw some catches from freshmen and in great plays from their veterans. That's really all you can ask for in a point like that. And, and it seems like they want to play this – I don't think they're allowed to not play this with four minutes, with over four minutes left, right? All right, yeah, I'm about to say, I mean. I it, am I wrong or is it, you have to play with over four minutes, right? If it's a score, if the score's close enough. It, was it changed recently? Was it was that one of the ones changed this summer? I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I don't, I want to say no, but at the same time, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, like, I, I've seen teams, you know, calling it early, you know, for obvious reasons. But, right. you know, but. But we're above that NCDA four-minute threshold. And with a score like 4-2, I mean, I don't think you're allowed to just call it here. But I, I could be totally wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not 100% for sure. Why I'm really not. But w regardless, we are playing these last <laughs> last four minutes and 13 seconds so and this is going to be fun we might see maryland lean into the lean into the penn state chaos a little bit here oh boy watching penn state in a uh, few minutes left situation is one of the most exciting things in college football and that's we've got some aggression on oh, the rush yet wow. again wow myers yeah myers he's gonna feel some type of way about that so we, and yeah. we saw a slide last time that's what i'm saying like i will say i will say both players hit each other there in my opinion yeah. Um, that's tough. For, that's, damn. Yep. Yep. Well, he's he's out now. If he wasn't out before, he's definitely out now. So. Adam racking up those stats, free kill. I bet you. I'll bet they'll they'll count that for him. They will. I'm sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was the second time in a row we've seen some. Some crazy stuff happened on the rush. First the slide, last point, and then that just truck stick like we're playing football out here that yeah. time. Yeah, we're definitely not playing football. And that's a drop catch. You hate to see it. Oh, and what a throw on it. Oh! oh. That's crazy. That's crazy. He wasn't even looking for that catch. He just literally just walked into it. And you got to know, when Penn State goes to Nationals, everything – the captains of every team are going to be telling you, don't throw at Hunter Stewart. They, they, they basically, if you're not a great thrower in a great position, you should not be throwing at Hunter Stewart. Yep. And it, honestly, that was a good position. It was. It's just sometimes it's a better – sometimes it's just a crazy catch. It's just a great athlete just making one of those crazy catches that just makes you just want to scratch your head. And Joey, wow. jump dodging, smiling at Adam. Oh, fun. why? And why would you add a why? Wow. Why, Griegas, why? What? Uh, uh, that was not necessary. And, and Joey doing a good job supporting Hunter here as he walks out. As, yes. That's the kind of thing that you don't see as much from unexperienced teams. And Rodriguez <laughs> gets him again. Did a wide out throw. And he takes a seat again. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. And, and Rodriguez like, too, like, what are we doing here? You know better. And that one was not nearly as hard as the first one, but it, you see, you see Hunter. Hunter walked off saying it's the same kid, and it was, <laughs> and, it, and it's Rodriguez. Don't Seriously. throw it at him. Yeah, don't don't do that. Ooh. Oh, good attempt by Adam. Oh, oh. man, could not almost see. get the team catch by number thirty-nine. And man goes down that exchange. Sixty-nine is blocking aggressively. I'd like to see some of the younger Penn State players, or at least less experienced Penn State players, get some throws in here. Oh, that's an easy catch. Oh, back-to-back -back catches for both teams. Yeah. 
Oh. 69 on Maryland. Not oh, in a position to catch that. Oh, that was bad. That. Ah, okay. Got you, Tiger. Got you. Joey lets us know he wanted it. He did. And he looked like it, too. That's what I was saying earlier. When you look like you want the ball every time you throw at it, that's, that's intimidating. Very intimidating. And I know from playing across from Joey, because I usually play right side and he tends to play left, he'll just look at you and smile during the game. I know. You walk back and forth, you smile. I smile back. We're all having a great time playing dodgeball together. Oh, yeah. Very energetic, very energetic young man. Always knows how to. Oh, and here he goes. Oh, <laughs> wow. We almost got it there. And the oh, he did it. Oh. He did it. And he gets him. He did it. Suicide kill was successful for Joey Tiger. <laughs> and 11 begging to be thrown out there. Oh, my God. And an innocent bystander got hit on that. My God. This point has been what we expected. A lot of fun. Oh, and what a crap. What a catch. Oh, my gosh. How? Insanity. That's crazy. Wow. That, that was great. That was a great watch. That was, that was funny. That was funny. Wow. That was a great game. So that gets you excited for the rest of the matchups of the day. Here, I think next we got JMU Maryland, I believe. Yeah. Maryland almost. You gotta love the effort there from Maryland. They didn't quit. They didn't lie down. No, they didn't. It was, it was there. There was man, like. And, and a lesser team with lesser spirit probably would have. You know, yeah. there are a lot of teams that would have just, you know, called it quits there, down 3-0. But they made it a game for sure. They really did. I mean, just, just close. Almost, almost made it to overtime. Almost just, man, just a, just a couple of things here and there, man. That was, that was the difference. That was a different, but definitely some standout players for Maryland just coming in big. Just ah, you hate to see it. I mean, it's it's tough when you're when you're when you're Rodriguez there getting all those catches, all those kills. It's tough to lose a game like that. But I, know. I do feel like Maryland should leave here with their heads held high for sure. I mean, Penn State obviously a great team. Penn State has had some huge wins, and to take them three two there and then you know things fall apart at the end. But it is what it is. They they had a good showing in my opinion. They did. They did. But yeah, it's it's gonna be Yeah, it should be JMU versus y'all. Well um, JMU's about to play Maryland here. Oh my apologies. I don't know. That's that's what happens when you don't have a schedule right in front of you. Alright, cool. So it's gonna be JMU versus Maryland. Got it. Alright, cool. Well, White, it was it was fun talking to you, man. I can't wait till you get back on the boot, man. I'm gonna be reffing this next game and it's gonna be exciting, so Oof. I hope everybody out there is uh is enjoying the broadcast. I, I hope so too, man. So thank you all very much for listening. And yep. thank you, Shadid, for being a great partner. Um, without question, man. Thanks thanks for being on here, man. All righty. So Penn State 1-0. and JMU 1-0. and Both Maryland and UVA 0-1. Man. Spins. Girl, don't be complacent. You better take time. Uh.